Hello everyone, welcome to Abdo channel. As part of the spring annotation series, we have covered till now the annotations auto wired, qualifier, component, controller, and response body. The annotation which we are picking up for today's topic is a rest controller. Before we delve more details into the rest controller annotation, we will just have a look at the controller annotation and the response body annotation which we discussed in the previous video. We discussed in detail about this controller annotation in the previous video. What is the purpose of the controller annotation? How it instructs the spring container to create the beans for the classes annotated with that controller? How it is used? To send the domain specific or the value objects or the transfer objects as a response and how that controller will be used as a rest controller when that class is annotated with the at controller and at response body annotations and how a class how a controller can be used as a spring mvc controller so that the controller will be sending a view okay all these examples we have seen it right so basically at controller along with at response body right these are the annotations which we have to use when we want to send the data when that controller is acting as a rest controller when we want to send the data to the user interface or to the client then we have to use at controller and at response body and we have to use at controller annotation when we want to send a view to the client okay here we have used some template engine right so based on the template engine the view resolvers will be picking up that particular view and model will be placed onto that view controller will be placing that model onto that view right so this is basically what we discussed with that controller annotation but as the microservices uh, development or the uses is growing up rapidly in the last couple of years uh, the developers who are using the spring mvc framework uh, for developing the restful web services with the spring mvc they have to use at controller and at response body annotation at least on the controller level or at least on the each handler mapping method level right so uh, it is a it is like a tedious process to use uh, at response body uh, annotation on each of the handler mappings when your application uh, or your controller is designed to uh, send the send the value objects or your controller is designed to act as a rest controller so in such scenarios spring development team has designed a new annotation at rest controller okay so if you want to send the value objects or the domain level domain specific poses to clients you just use that annotation at rest controller you don't have to specify at response body okay at rest controller is a specialized version of at controller at controller is a specialized version of at component which we know it already so at rest controller is a specialized version of at controller it is a combination of at controller plus at response body okay uh, let me show you the documentation at controller spring if you see this at controller a is having a component right let me show you at rest controller see this uh, at rest controller is having at controller and at response body combination so which means that if at all your controller is annotated with at rest controller you don't have to use at response body on your controller level or on your handler mapping method level 
okay uh, that is one advantage of using rest controller over controller at controller okay the uh, the main intention of this introduction of this at rest controller is to is to make your controller whenever it needs to send uh, value objects or the data whenever your web application is use is sending any view object any views right like we have seen in the model and view then you can use at controller then it is it will be web mvc controller even though your web mvc controller is being used to send the restful uh, or the value objects are being acted as restful controller as we have to use at rest uh, response body on each and every handler mapping method or on the controller level for ease of development purpose spring has designed this at rest controller annotation so that we don't have to use at response body on each and every handler mapping method okay uh, that is the main motto of this uh, at rest controller so um, we will see that with an example now okay this is the example uh, this is the sample project which i have created at rest controller annotation what i have done is i have copied everything from the controller annotation 2 to 1 uh, to this uh, rest controller annotation i have not done anything else i just copied all the classes from there to here now what we'll do is we'll close everything we will open the controller from rest controller project here we will remove this response body and we will also remove at response uh, at we will add rest controller instead of controller okay and my application is having a dependency already for xml format okay now let me run it it's running right now let me run this let me trigger the request to the microservice see it is giving me the xml okay uh, if i remove this see uh, json also it is giving me right because my handler mapping method can produce xml and json suppose if i remove everything from here then let's see what will happen let me check json it is giving it is also giving the xml which means that at rest controller is checking what all data formats that are supported by your application all of them will be applicable to your handler mapping method even though your uh, handler mapping method is not specifying any specific uh, specific data format types suppose if i want my my handler mapping to support only xml now if clients are sending uh, json requests what will happen even though my application is supporting json if my handler mapping is not supporting the json output will it produce the json output or not say uh, this is xml request xml is fine let me check with the json see so if you don't specify anything whatever that is supported by your application all those output formats will be supported by default by all the all the handler mapping methods in your uh, rest controller in your controller that is annotated with the rest controller but but if at all if you specify a specific media type on your handler mapping method then only that output will be sent otherwise you will be getting this 406 not acceptable data format okay so that is about uh, rest controller okay uh, when you want to send the domain specific value objects or the poses then you have to use 
uh, rest controller annotation as it inbuilt converts the value objects into the json object and that json object or the xml object will be put as a body in the http response object by that by those identified converters okay in while we are looking at the controller annotation we have seen an example of how uh, we can send the model and view objects also right suppose uh, can i use the rest controller on the controller which is sending the view like get controller is sending the model and view can i use the rest controller here yes we can use it but the it is highly recommended to use at rest controller only if your controller is or the handler mapping methods are sending the value objects not the model and view in the microservices world right uh, we don't uh, send uh, generally the view objects uh, views from the uh, controller okay generally microservices are built on one framework ui will be built on any other uh, ui libraries or frameworks like angular or react or anything else right so in such cases uh, ui layer will be making only the call microservice call to spring boot and the spring will be responding with only the data how the data should be represented it will all, it will always be the responsibility of the ui layer which will be on the different uh, different framework these are all called as single page applications right so in such cases uh, rest controller will only be sending the data it is all the responsibility of the ui layer you know in the microservice uh, transaction uh, layer the architecture like applications right so in such cases uh, we just to have to use the address controller when we don't when we have to send the value objects okay uh, even though rest controller supports model and view we don't uh, it is highly recommended to use the rest controller to send the data objects value objects okay we have seen it right so employee controller uh, is sending the value object even though we have not used the response body rest controller in build converting it okay suppose uh, if we are not giving any output media types that are supported by this method whatever supported by the application will be supported by this method that also we have seen with an example so the main difference between controller and rest controller is controller can be used as a controller for restful web service requests and the model and uh, view objects web mvc requests as well whereas the rest controller is highly recommended to use uh, restful web service requests to serve the web restful web service requests controller uh, whenever we are using controller if we want to serve the restful web service request we have to use along with the at controller we have to use response body as well but rest controller is a combination of at controller and at response body you don't have to use the explicitly use the at response body okay those are the differences between controller and rest controller I think that's all for today. We covered pretty much everything about a uh, REST controller, why we need the REST controller, why, why it is highly recommended to use the REST controller for the controllers which are sending the value objects. And we have seen with the examples as well. That's all for today. Thank you for watching. Please give it a like, share and subscribe to my channel. Thank you.